Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna, there we go. Okay, perfect. Now I can see you wonderfully. So yes, it's nice to meet you. Hello, officially. I think we've met before. Oh yeah, we have. Okay, I thought so. I'm like, I know this, I know the face. So yeah. um, how this is gonna go, I don't know if Emily kind of gave you guys the rundown, but I'll do a quick introduction of myself. Um, and then of course I want you to introduce yourself and then we'll just start so doing some Q&A so we can get to know you, okay? Sure. So welcome guys. Uh, we're here to meet some of our Mrs. Colorado contestants. I'm Christina Sasha, Mrs. Colorado 2008, and I am so excited that I get to interview one of our contestants that's going to be vying for the title of Mrs. Colorado coming up here in July. And please introduce yourself. Who am I chatting with today? My name is Tammy Peterson, and I am representing the city of Lakewood in this year's pageant. So exciting. Oh my gosh. So how are you guys doing hunkered down? out there with uh, the quarantine? Oh, we're just fine. We just, yes. the kids are just trying to get school finished. And so that has been a struggle of ultimate proportions. Yes, I can imagine. Well, it's funny because when Emily asked me to do this and I said, well, wait, wait a second. You're asking a bunch of beauty queens to record video and they haven't been to a hair salon. <laughs> and Actually, I, don't know. I got my hair done yesterday. Oh, well, you know what? You're way ahead of me. I'm like, we've had no, no <laughs> done. I'm like, we are, this is, you're getting all natural of these ladies. So I'm, I'm, hey, I'm feeling it. So. That's the best way to see us is yes, the I natural way. I love it. I love it. So, well, thank you for chatting with me. And I'm glad I get to find out a little bit more about you. And uh, so I'm just going to dive right in. Emily, uh, Emily Stark is the director of Mrs. Colorado, Mrs. Wyoming, Miss Colorado for America, Miss Wyoming for America. And uh, so I'm very honored that she asked me to, you know, get to know some of the girls. So I'm just going to dive right in. Um, so it says, uh, tell me, um, tell me a little bit about you just in general. Let's start there. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm a third generation Colorado native. My, uh, my mom's side of the family is natives to Colorado. My husband, Brooke, and I have been married for, will be 19 years in June. We have three boys. Colin is 17, Jack is 14, and Thatcher is 10. And so we're very busy most of the time. <laughs> uh, let's see. Our pet is named Chloe, and she is a six-foot boa constrictor that hangs out in her tank all the time. Oh, thankfully. my goodness. She can't get out, which is so much better than anything else. I don't have to worry about her. So I love that pet. <laughs> wow. That's I, work, I work for a guy uh, here in the Denver area that owns networking organizations for C-level executives in the Denver metro area. And so I manage those organizations for him, plan events and keep up membership and, and do all kinds of things. And thankfully, I can do that about 95% of the time from home, which is very, very helpful. I also am a Jefferson County Public School substitute teacher, and I specifically do subbing at my kids' schools, which are charter schools. And so I do one at my elementary school and then my older boys high school. And I have absolutely loved doing that. It's been a lot of fun to be a part of their world. Wow, gosh, you are busy. So you thought you'd just throw in competing for Mrs. Colorado. No big deal. Just throw another why not? In there. I love it. Well, you know what? That's why they call women in this industry super women. You know, I don't know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I, first of all, you have three boys. Um, I have one girl and one boy. I'll trade you my girl for your three boys. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I promise. I promise it's not, not any less. Boys are I, just as dramatic, I'm sure, as you know. This just depends on the personality and... Yeah, yeah. Well, I have varying you, my levels. Like having, like having ten kids, but she's delightful. But she's going to be seventeen, so who knows? Maybe we'll be related one day. <laughs> year old son, so. She will love you for the rest of your life, though. Oh, She'll that's be true. mama. Oh, okay, see, I that's know. awesome. And then I can share her with you. <laughs> we'll see. Send her my <laughs> way. A little bit of pink might go really good in our house. I love it. I love it. So, um, so let me let tell me a little bit more of what motivated you to participate. What made you decide to do this? I was motivated because I really wanted to step outside my comfort zone. I think like any young girl, you kind of watch Miss America and you're kind of blown away by the pageantry of it, what you see on the stage. And I remember watching um, the pageant at the beginning of uh, 2013 and I was just like, huh, I know there's a Mrs. Pageant. So I started Googling it and I was kind of, okay, 
let's do it. And that was probably one of the most terrifying things I've ever done is hand in my application to compete. Uh, and it, it, it's still terrifying because I think anytime you choose to step outside your comfort zone, you, you're putting yourself out there. And so of course it's scary. And this is something that's entirely new. Anytime someone new that, that doesn't know I've ever competed is like, how do you get on stage in a bathing suit? And they said, well, you know, it's not like the dream where you're walking around in your underwear and everybody's pointing at you. There are other people in bathing suits with you. You've got solidarity. So it's not as scary. I mean, yes, it's very scary because you're kind of burying your whole soul, but it's really empowering as well to learn more about yourself and to have an opportunity to come to know yourself in a way that I don't think you ever have that chance ever in your life to say, okay, what do I stand for? What are my passions? What really drives me? And how can I share that with a panel of judges or with a group of women in a comfortable setting so that they feel like they relate to you? That's awesome. It's very exciting. And you're, you know, the reason with it that you're participating is one of the reasons that we love to hear. You know, I always say, um, I think the main reason that, uh, you know, pageantry is such a special thing, special sport, if you will, is because it's about women being able to not only celebrate who they become, but everything they've overcome in their life. And I just think it's so awesome. So welcome to the sisterhood. <laughs> so, okay, let's see here. Um, Let's see, what is the life lesson you want others to learn from you? The one thing I would hope that people who know me would take away from me is that the best thing that you can do for yourself is consciously choosing your own life path. And I think along with that sphere is being authentic with yourself. You know, we're really, really conditioned as women to need approval from other women, from other sources, from social media, and in the process, I feel that a lot of times we kind of lose ourselves. And you know, it comes with knowing who you are and where you want to be. And I chose instead of a New Year's resolution this year, the word authentic to be. And I had thought about it for like four or five months before then. How can I implement this in my own life? Because I wanted to be authentic, but you know, we have so many things bombarding us that I didn't didn't know how to approach it. And so I chose that as my word for the year to focus on being really authentic because I didn't ever want to, and I, it's still a work in progress, of course, but I don't want to base my self-worth on someone else's. Like for a really good example is, you know, a lot of times when you're getting ready to go anywhere, especially like a party or a gathering, even with its, if it's with family or friends, who doesn't stand in front of their closet and go, what should I wear? How am I going to be perceived? You know, how, and, and it's not that that's a negative thing, but I, I think that as I really take the time to go, how do I want to feel when I go out with so-and-so? How do I want to be perceived? Not how are they going to perceive me? I'm more comfortable in who I am and how I go about living my life. And I'm not as worried about other people's opinions. I just have this, it comes from within instead of without, the self-awareness and the, the self-acceptance. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I tell you, if we could only bottle that up, the things that we've learned to get to that point in life and share it with our children, I tell you, we'd be millionaires because, um, you know, everything that you just said, we, you know, I'm sure you do as well. We say those same things to our kids, our teenage kids that are just unfortunately, you know, in this whole world of social media which is all about being accepted. How many likes do we have on our photos? How many, all of yeah. it. And so, um, you know, I love it. I love that you're kind of, you know, um, you know, taking the opportunity to, you know, scream to the mountaintops, if you will, about how important it is that, you know what, really we're the only people that should matter <laughs> about what we feel about ourselves. That should be first and yeah. foremost. So I love that you're sharing that lesson. And, you know, definitely as a mom, we, you know, I can respect that for sure. Um, so let's see here. Okay, here's exciting. If you were crowned Mrs. Colorado in July, what would your reign look like? Well, I understand that as you're crowned, you really have to be very flexible because everybody's year can be definitely different than what they thought. I know Valerie really thought that she had an idea about what she was going to do and a lot of things changed. And I, I know that's changed for a lot of the, the queens, but if I had my way, <laughs> My goal and my passion in life is school choice in Colorado. I really feel that um, it's something that is, it is huge in Colorado school choice, but I don't feel that a lot of parents really know that 
the choice for educating their children is in their laps and they have all the control. And so my goal would be to partner with a lot of the local organizations and chapters as well as the national ones. For instance, uh, the National School Choice Week organization, they have state chapters as well as they do a national event for a week every year to recognize that their school choice in the nation as well as in the states. Uh, there's a school choice kids organization, which I would love to partner with and the National Coalition for Public School Options. There's a lot and then just have the opportunity to speak with family groups and school groups on educating their their parents that, you know, there's so many options for school and education and that we should not ever have these kids that feel worthless or that don't feel like they can fit in or don't graduate because they just couldn't cut it because there's an educational environment for every student in this state and in the nation, in fact. Yeah, awesome. And I think that'd be a great way to hit the ground running for sure. God knows we need that to be enforced. So, and, <laughs> and parents like myself to be educated on that. So we'll have to chat more about that at another oh, time. Right. I want to hear more. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Um, who do you admire and why? You can't say me. I'm just putting that out there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I, I thought a lot about this and then as I was talking about my life lesson, I actually was thinking about um, something you said on, you know, we talk about our kids. And I have to say, with being authentic, really, really admire my oldest son, Colin. He is a junior this year, and we've sent our kids to charter schools for all of their education. And right now, they're in a really very small pre-K through 12 a charter school and so he's been there since seventh grade and I got to give props to this kid he has got the curliest hair I have curly hair but I got my hair done so <laughs> I can't tell that uh, you cheated today you cheated I, I did today. cheat today I, I, I have I'm, a hair I'm not gonna hold that against you but you know it's okay. <laughs> okay. but his hair is like oh, he can grow a fro I mean this is how curly my kids hair is and I got to give him props because even from the time he was little he owned who he was uh, in seventh grade, their requirement for dressing up for Halloween was you, and this is the same every year, you have to dress up like a historical figure from, from history. And so he created his own knight's armor out of cardboard. Like he spent weeks and weeks and weeks putting this thing together and spray painting it, and he wore it to school all around and he he I mean he owns this fro that he's got and he does these things that I kind of think dude you are gutsy and you know I really gotta I really admire him for not going with the crowd but saying hey you know how can I be a little bit different and and he is kind of shy and he's a little introverted but he does these things where I just I'm shocked and I'm so proud of him for owning who he is. Like he won the school dance off at the pep rally in the oh, fall that's and so fun. he went on YouTube and learned some dance so he could do it. And I get all these messages and I'm talking to the teachers as I'm subbing and I hear, did you know that Colin won the dance off? And I'm all, uh, what? Oh, dance what? <laughs> dance I'm, just, I'm like, excuse me, this is the kid who doesn't do anything. And so, yeah. you know, I gotta say, I really admire my son for just, being awesome and being who he is and great. standing out in his great. own way. That's great. You, well, that's obviously one of your biggest accomplishments as well, because to be able to be so proud of someone that you raised yourself, that's pretty awesome. I know I feel the same about my kids. I can't wait to meet my future son-in-law since apparently our kids are getting married. I've decided that, by the way. I, I'm always trying to marry her off. I don't know. Um, so Please, let's see Anytime. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. So, you know, Emily had told us, we, I, and I love, she knew, she knew, because I'm a chatter and I love to talk to people. And so she said, try to keep this around 15 minutes or so because I want to be able to post it and so people can watch it. So we'll try to tie it up here. I'll try to end it with a bang and um, find out a little bit more. But I still, let me see, I'm a little, be a little choosy what I end it with. Um, let's see, a couple things. I'm going to make it a kind of a two-part question. Um, tell me what you've learned most about yourself in preparation for the pageant. Uh, how many years have you competed? And um, so let's start there. How many years have you competed and what have you learned about yourself in those preparation, uh, years of preparation for the pageant? This will be my seventh year competing. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I've, I've learned a lot from the first year, which I, I kind of mentioned, you know, it was just so scary. And I, I know that I've learned so many things. It's hard to condense that all. But one of them is that I, 
I am really, really, really determined. Like I, if I want to accomplish something, if I have a goal, I know what I need to do. I know that I can't give myself excuses and I'm there. Like I, I have a sign that I got from Hobby Lobby right on my nightstand that says, don't wish for it, work for it. And I see that all the time. And that is one of those things. And I'm, I'm a visual person. So I've, I've got printed off motivational things that always tell me, you know, this you're in control and you're there. And it's naturally a part of my, who I am, but you got to have drive and determination. I, uh, you know, the things I've learned, I've, I've already touched on a lot of them, you know, authenticity and owning who you are and being proud of what you can, can contribute. And the other thing that's really helped me in, in preparing is knowing my passions. You know, I think Emily says, says this when she meets with contestants, you know, if you were to, tr to win and go on the news the next day, what would you want to talk about? And that was one of those things that, cause you know, the crown is nice, but you know, that's an accessory to being a title holder. That's just the nice part of it. You're really there to serve the community, to, to be an advocate for not only women, married and single, but to help everybody see, okay, she might have a crown, but she's just like me. She's a mom or she's a, a working woman and she's just trying to make her own path and to be strong and to share what she has with other people. And those are definitely the things that I've learned. The other thing I've learned is how to be a better public speaker because <laughs> you cannot get through this with, with lots of ums and likes. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm sure right. I exactly. spattered those through here. I still Literally. do it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm an interview coach and I still do it. I, I'll talk and be like, well, um, you really need to stop saying, um, Oh, did I just say, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it comes to the territory. It's good. It's good. But no, it is a really good way. I mean, it is such a, it's such a something that you can take with you throughout your career, throughout anything. I mean, um, you know, outside of being a title holder, I mean, it's, it's something that's an invaluable uh, gift to have. So I think that's awesome. And it's something that yeah. is so, I mean, I, I'm my daughter who competes in pageants that I am so fortunate that she's learned that she's an amazing speaker. Um, so let's see here. Um, it looks like we're probably going to tie it up, but I just want to just kind of wrap it up with one last thing. Um, do you have one last thing that you want to share with us, the audience, if you will, um, so we can, one last little thing you want to know about that we might maybe would want to know about you. Well, I have a fun story about our snake. <laughs> I'm scared of the snake. That would love, I would love to share. Okay. So my husband is an animal lover of all kinds. Like he's that person that just loves animals. And so before we were married and at any point in his teenage years and college years, he either owned a snake or he's owned a tarantula. And so we weren't able to have a traditional pet. And so he goes, well, which one would you prefer? Cause you know, I'd be cool with the tarantula or a snake. And I said, oh no, no, <laughs> we will never have a tarantula in our house ever. Because let me tell you a few, few reasons why. So a tarantula, if it gets out of its tank, it just, you know, goes everywhere yeah. and it, it doesn't stay anywhere and you could just come upon it at any time. <laughs> That's just a tad scary. But the, However, but the snake is okay. But the no, snake no, no, is no, let me tell you why. Off. Let me tell you why. The snake is way infinitely better. Okay. I know it sounds like it's not, but it is. So you gotta sell me on this. I, I'm selling you. <laughs> Christina, I'm, I am selling you on the snake. Okay. okay. Uh, so a snake, if you didn't know, they actually have really distinct personalities. We've had a snake before that was very angry and very angsty. Like she would strike at my husband a lot. And so we got rid of that snake. Oh, <laughs> the one we've had, we've had her since she was a baby. And so she's grown from teeny tiny to, to what she is now. She is very, very, very gentle and very just like chill and so calm. Uh, before she got so big, I would have no problem getting her out of the tank and letting like little kids see her, but she's just so big and so strong that I won't do it anymore. The cool thing about a snake though is, and this is the thing to remember, if a snake ever gets out, a snake, and she's gotten out before, and I just sit on the couch and let them search. <laughs> it's like, your job, not mine. Uh -huh. And so if the snake gets out, they like small cramped spaces that are dark. So if a snake gets out, it will go to the closest, smallest, darkest spot to them instead of wandering around the house like a tarantula would do. Right. So the snake has gotten out before, and they looked all over the house for her, and she was in a box under a chair right next to the tank. 
Like that's how far she went. Like, and she so just to, like, yeah, she's like, no, nah, I'm good. And so that's why I say a snake is infinitely better than a tarantula any day. Well, I can tell you what I've learned from this conversation that um, if and when, I always like to say that, if, <laughs> when you become Mrs. Colorado, um, I don't think the barbecues will be at your house. I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm going to vote against it, but that's okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll warm up to the idea. I don't but I um, will keep that in mind <laughs> and pass the info on to the husband because he does like bringing the snakes to picnics <gasps> and barbecues oh, for yes, the shock thanks. factor. <laughs> well, okay, he loves okay. it. It's his thing. It's All really, right, and kids it. love, I love it. it. Okay, I have something to look forward to. I have something to look forward to. Well, <laughs> you have just been so fun. You've been such a delight. And, um, and gosh, you know, I knew as soon as you started saying, um, I've competed seven times, I'm like, wait a second. Tammy, wait, I, oh my God, I'm like, I know you. You were actually on the first panel that I was in. Oh, I was your judge. Okay, oh my gosh. Yeah. See, oh, that's so funny because it's when I see girls outside of like stage makeup and hair and makeup and the oh, yeah. town, and not to mention when, especially when I'm on a panel and I'm judging like, you know, 40, 50 girls, 60 girls, um, it's always hard to remember when you see somebody outside of the outside of the environment. So I'm sitting here going, I swear I know I know her from, but that's how. So it's it's wonderful to have you back, at Mrs. Colorado, and Thank I can't wait to see you. And um, it's it's gonna be crazy. It's a summer pageant this year, so it'll be fun. But um, thanks so much for chatting with me, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. And of course, if you have any questions, always reach out. And we want to say thank you to all the viewers, everybody, for chiming in and watching and getting to know Tammy, uh, Mrs. Lakewood, correct? Um, yes. And uh, so, yeah, so thanks, Tammy. And uh, I'm sure Emily will be reaching out, and we will chat soon. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank Bye. you, too. Bye-bye.